Hello besties, welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time seeing this face, please don't make it your last. We are on the road to 5,000 subscribers. I'm kindly requesting you to hit that subscribe button to help me grow. Please also consider sharing me out and liking this video so that YouTube can recommend it to as many people as possible. If you're a returning subscriber, Thank you so much for your loyalty and I really appreciate you. In today's video, I'm super excited guys because I'll be sharing some history about Savannah in Georgia. I got to visit this historic site city and this city is just beautiful. It has a lot to offer for its residents and also those people who are just touring this city. Some facts about Georgia. This city was established in 1733. That was like decades, years and years ago. This city is vibrant. The people are beautiful. The food, the culture, it has a lot to offer. Apparently, this city is one of the cities in the United States that is known to have like the most squares. The squares range between 22 to 33, but apparently with the tour guide we had, she told us they had 33 uh, squares, but they lost two of them to French colonies. So they remained with 31. So in total they have 31 squares that is a lot of squares and each square has a story to tell this city has a lot of like famous movies filmed in this city just to name a few if you've watched baywatch by the rock the movie was filmed in tybee island in savannah if you've watched Forest Gump by I think it's Tom Hanks yeah if you've watched um, Forest Gump by Tom Hanks the movie was also filmed in Savannah Georgia and we got to visit that particular place like the bench where he sat the street where he ran across when he, he found out about his friend Jenny yes you are not wrong Jenny so it just has a lot to offer and it's an interesting city to visit and the history is just to be heard of without wasting much of your time um we really wanted to tour the city by ourselves but once the hotel we were staying in uh, we had a very nice concierge who really advised us on what to do because we only had like two and a half days for us to be in the city and so she did advise us to take a trolley tro they have like trolley tours it's a lot of squares and i just wanted to know about the history of the city because it's one of the cities that i had longed for a long time for me to visit it so uh, we decided to book the trolley services uh, so that we can get a tour guide and they can just explain everything in depth about this city so guys we took an advantage of the trolley services and we had a tour guide she was super nice uh, she explained everything in depth and you can just tell how much she loved telling the history of Savannah. So guys, um, the first stop was, of course, where we went and boarded the tour. You, you arrive, go board the tour, the trolley, the tour bus. Then um, the bus doesn't have to be full, but at least they need at least seven to 10 people on the bus. So we waited there for like 10 minutes, we were like almost like 12 people in the bus so it was enough people for you for us to start with our journey so um, after that the lady introduced herself have the lady who speaks and also have the driver and everybody is very very friendly and so uh, after that we did go to their welcome center they do have a welcome center welcome center they do have like someone who has to check uh, your tickets if your tickets are current if they are valid so that was our first stop 
so we went there then after that we had a lady who came and welcomed us to savannah she introduced herself and she was able to tell us her name what she does what we should expect and also got to uh, got to tell us about us expecting to meet other people along the way so how it works is each and every stop has different people who have a story to tell about that particular square or city so it's a very interesting series i'm gonna incorporate it in different parts so it's gonna have like maybe episode one two three four uh, depending on how long it is guys because i want you to experience this and also learn about this history about savannah because it's a very beautiful and interesting history that i want to share with you guys every week i'll be releasing an episode so that you guys can get to experience this and i'm hoping you're gonna love this um and if you have a chance or an opportunity guys please consider visiting savannah you're gonna love each and every experience of this city so other than that i'm gonna stop prumbling and let's jump to the video Hello. i'm kelly i'm the tour guide hi but i'm a team we've got captain brenda doing most of the work <laughs> we do share our bounty at the end of the day our pirate treasure gratuity is much appreciated and we're gonna go to the welcome center so this is stop one and in between stop one and two, we're going to go to the Welcome Center. I call that stop 1.5. <laughs> Dinosaur? Yeah. 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 We are moving. Will you say thank you? Tell her thank you. Oh, he said thank you. She listened to you. Here we go. Are you ready for the adventure? Yay! 1853, steam engines. The founder is William Washington Gordon. That was Juliet Gordon Lowe's grandpa. She's the founder of the Girl Scouts. The Savannah College of Art and Design. The entire historical district is their campus. Cars. They didn't even turn off the steam engines to yeah. do maintenance. They would just hook them up to a vent jet to get to the chimney. Big. So that was a really hot chimney. So they put cisterns at the base so the workers could have hot showers. They even had a garden and ergonomical floors. 1850s, amazing. 33 acres. Electric powerhouse. They have demos. So Scadland has fancy dormitories in the historical district. <laughs> this is Yamacraw Village. The Yamacraw were the natives here when the English showed up. repurposed this building as their beach so they don't need a roof. You can see the building is at least 200 years old just by looking at the brick pattern. That's the old historical pattern. Every few rows, the brick's on its side, literally. They changed that after the Great Charleston Earthquake of 1886. Ooh. Savannah's on the same fault line. The SCAT students, their mascot is called the Honeybee, so they have a beeline for their bus routes. The SCAT students also get to walk across the historical viaduct here from 1853. That's where the trains used to go. They have a gorgeous garden at his foot. So this is our welcome center. It looks quite retro. This is an old street light. There's carvings in there with dates of 1950s. All the way at the pole. Like people would literally climb the pole and carve names and dates in there. It's kind of hard to see. Get Our retro welcome center. This was an oasis, oasis in the 1950s. Like they had palm trees on top. So there's going to be a ticket checker come on board. She's going to check our tickets. So get them ready. 
All right, good afternoon, guys. I need to check your tickets. If you're pulling out, if you need tickets, you can do that at this time. We take everything but Discover. Mm -hmm. Take cash. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, thank you. We have all our beautiful, preserved, and restored homes, which are one of my personal favorite parts of the city. All the wonderful squares designed by our very own founder, General James Edward Oglethorpe, and one of the largest urban forests in the whole United States. Now, to let you know, too, when you're out on your tour, you're going to see a few other historical figures, kind of like myself. <laughs> Make sure you listen up, because they're going to want to tell you their story. You might learn a thing or two along the way. But for now, I'm going to officially hand you over to your wonderful tour guide here. Hope you have a great time on your tour and enjoy your time here in Savannah. Thank you. I'm the one that has to be the bearer of bad news, the rules. First rule, <laughs> silence your cell phone. Second okay. rule, um, keep talking to a low volume. Captain uh, up here is going to be listening to her radio, so we got to kind of be quiet for her. And uh, no standing while moving. And keep your arms, legs, and heads inside the trolley. And that's it. Y'all ready to hear some history? Yes. There's so much in Savannah. Yeah. It's mind-blowing. Well, this is Yamacraw Village. The Yamacraw were the creek and the Yamasee that formed the Yamacraw. They were the parts of their tribes friendly with the English. Yes. So England got here in 1733. It was King George II that sent General James Oglethorpe to establish Savannah, Georgia, the 13th colony. They had a special plan for Savannah. England wanted Savannah to protect North and South Carolina over there from the Spanish of Florida. So since Savannah protected the Carolinas, they sent their carpenters and sawyers over here to help build the city. And they made it look a lot like Charleston, we'll see. So the first ship that got here in 1733, that was General James Oglethorpe's ship called the Ann. There was 116 people on board, but the first doctor aboard that ship did not arrive alive. The second doctor mm -hmm. came on the second ship four months later. Mm -hmm. So. Oglethorpe got here, he met the chief, Tomachichi, of the Yamakra, and he asked the chief permission to settle here. The chief said, yes, please help us fight the Spanish. So it worked out, everyone had a mutual enemy, so they were the best of friends. But they actually became mutual leaders. The chief and Oglethorpe laid out the rules together. First rule, no slaves. That was Oglethorpe's idea. So then it was gonna be a unique, self-sufficient farming community. He was very anti-slavery. He was even a reformer of generous prisons in England. Second rule, no warriors. Third rule, no Catholics. Fourth rule, no rum. No rum, no hard spirits, no gin, nothing, no brandy. That was Chief Tomachichi's idea. It was his idea to ban the rum. And the only reason why they banned Catholics is because of the Spanish Inquisition. The second ship that got here in 1733 were the Sephardic Jews fleeing the Spanish Inquisition from Portugal and Spain. And Dr. Samuel Nunes was the first doctor of the colony. The first baby that was born male was born to the Jews, Philip Menaces. Philip Menace was the first male baby born. But just before he was born, a little baby girl was born. They named her Georgia. Georgia Close. She was an English baby. Well, Oglethorpe is the one who designed the square system. This is the largest urban forest in the United States because of modernization. Oglethorpe was the first Freemason here, so they wanted 33 squares. That's the, their number of totality. We lost two to modernization back in the 1930s. Highway 17 ran through here. Yes. So. But the grid system was a military strategy to have a green space to fall and retreat back to during war times if needed. And that was taken advantage of at the Siege of Savannah. We'll go over that down the road. They were retreating all the way from like stop three all the way to stop one. There's a fort over there. It used to be a car dealership. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they did some modernization through the 30s, 40s, and 50s. But in the 1950s is when the preservation projects began to restore the history. This is Old Liberty Square, named after the Sons of Liberty, pre-revolution. 
and we have the Elbert Square up here with a where the uh, Civic Center is. But they lifted those historical homes and buildings and moved them to the Southern Square so they, they would be demolished. Well, when the Jews got here, the first thing they needed was a cemetery. It takes about at least two months to get here from England. And they have been traveling that whole time with deceased on board their ship. Jews are supposed to bury their dead within 24 hours. They have religious laws, so it was an emergency. Oglethorpe gave them the, this lamp. So when they found out this was a Jewish cemetery, the Mordecai Shuftal Society donated this. It's, a, it's got a menorah on the front of it, but it's a collective gravestone, actually. It's at the end of these rows of azaleas. Every single name of the original Jewish colonist buried beneath this is etched on the back. And the menorah is on the front. And there's all the, the stones that they traditionally place when they visit a Jewish grave. 